Today I'm meeting up with Natalie Rotman Coat, a photographer and painter, to chat about her artist story. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's an honor. How did you get started with your artwork? What what started the creative process? Well, I was a very crafty kid and I was always doing something. And then I got into my career. I'm a software engineer for 30 years. I just retired a couple years ago. And I started to get back into being creative as a way to reduce stress. Mm -hmm. And that was probably about 15 years or so ago. And I took a drawing class at the Sharon Arts Center in Sharon, New Hampshire, thinking no one could ever teach me to draw. And I wanted to draw my dog, because I had a greyhound, and I thought that would be a good goal. And I, they did teach me to draw which I was pretty amazed at. So I've just gone on to all different paths since then. Yeah, yeah. awesome. And uh, what mediums do you work with? I like pretty much everything. Um, I can't seem to focus on one particular thing. So I've, when I paint, I've used watercolor and ink. I've used acrylics. I've used oil. I've used um, pastels. And lately, I've been doing a series of animals that are mixed media, which is a little of all of that. And then for photography, I started doing photography more for reference photos for paintings, and then I realized I really liked some of the photos, and so I do sell my photos, and I print them on paper, on metal, on wood, on canvas, um, on tote bags, on you know anything really, just whatever. I really feel strongly that art needs to be affordable, and I like to have items that are utilitarian. That's awesome. Um, so you, you've gotten a wide range of different mediums and products. Um, how has that developed and changed? Is it just you get you get curious with one particular thing and, and you see you run with it, or um, how yes, does it, yeah. it, it, it all starts with I see something different that I want to learn how to do. Mm -hmm. And right now, what's on my horizon, which I don't know when I'll actually catch up with it, but is encaustic, which is painting with wax. Ooh. I've never done that, and I love the effects of it. And someday I'll delve into that and. What usually happens is I buy the supplies and then maybe one or two or three years later, I start using them. <laughs> so that's what seems to happen. Oh, I can yeah. understand that, definitely. <laughs> You're creating, so you started with wanting to draw your dog and um, you stay pretty close to nature subjects. Is that a particular message or story that you want to tell with those subjects or is that just what you're interested in? It's definitely what I'm interested in. I feel extremely connected to animals mm -hmm. and animals are out in nature and I also feel very connected to nature when I'm out there. It's very peaceful, it's beautiful, and I try to share the beauty of nature and animals with people um, through art in all these different forms. Since, since you've worked with such a variety of different mediums, what has become your favorite medium, or do you even have a favorite? Right now, I would say I'm delving more into the details of editing photography. Mm -hmm. So I'm right now, photography is kind of taking the majority of my time. Mm -hmm. I've been learning a lot more about Photoshop, and I have a photo here that's these deer right here, mm -hmm. which is actually one deer that ran across a field, and I've been figuring out how to do masking. So oh, it's, really? that's one 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 deer, three different photos. And luckily they didn't overlap, so I was able to very simply mask them together into one photo, a composite. And I've been learning that. And I have a friend who is doing a stock photography class. Mm -hmm. She's developing it. She's um, from Arizona. It's called Roadmap to Royalties. And I'm in her guinea pig class. So I just submitted some photos for stock photography. So I'm going to start building a portfolio of that. I have... I just backed up my computer. I have 850 gigabytes of photos, oh my so I think I have a lot to work with. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So that's something new. But uh, but I am dying to paint. Mm -hmm. You know, you get that desire where you mm -hmm. haven't painted in a little while, so that'll be coming back. And and right now it's the mixed media animals. That's really cool. Um, with the mixed media, what are you working with with that? Well, it starts off with um, a basic pencil drawing and then watercolor. Mm -hmm. And then I put a ground on it so that I can then use pastels. Mm -hmm. And then pastels. And then, believe it or not, you, I paint acrylic over the pastels, which just gives it a really cool texture and color. Um, and then sometimes I add a little bit of metallics and charcoal lines. So it, it's and kind of a little cool. of everything. And yeah. it, it's cool because I like everything. Yeah. So it's putting it all together. Do you have set studio space in your house? I assume it's with my all these supplies. <laughs> yeah. It's the whole house. Yeah, you can ask my husband. It's the whole house. Yep. I know how that goes. <laughs> I try to contain it to one area, so but do I. it just kind of it's goes. Yep. 
you mentioned that um, sometimes you just get the urge to paint and that's then you go with that. Um, do you find there is a difference in working with digitally versus working um, it physically with paint and, oh, yeah. and objects? And yeah, there's a big, big, big difference. And I, I like the feel of paint. I love paint. I don't know why. I've all, my father, I used to be the tomboy, and I used to be out with him, and he had me paint the house. And I mean, I was into paint way back early, and yeah. I still love it. And the idea of being a software engineer, you have to um, get the big picture of what you need to build, and then break it into small pieces, and then build it, build it, build it in layers, and then it's done. And painting is the same way. So I really feel that they're they're, they coincide a lot, and my skills I had as an engineer apply to painting. So I like the idea of starting with a blank canvas and layering and layering and layering and layering, and then all of a sudden there it is. Some people, some artists talk about going through a, par a part where they really hate their painting. Do you yes. ever experience that when all you're time. working with those layers? Yep. Okay. <laughs> it gets scary. Yeah. It gets a little frightening yeah. when you're painting, and you you. Know, I don't actually see the painting at the end. Some people can paint from their brain mm -hmm. and their image in their head, but me, I need a reference, or yeah, usually I use a reference, and I try to vary it from the reference, mm -hmm. but. I'm not exactly sure what will happen, and sometimes it's just awful, awful. It looks like a toddler did it, and then all of a sudden, and maybe it still does for what all I know, but uh, eventually it'll start to look like something that is more cohesive. Yeah. When, would you say you have a particular style? So I know with your photography, obviously, that's, although you have, um, you have digitized and made photography look like paintings as well, haven't you? Yeah, like, somewhat. There, are, there's software yeah. that will do that. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you try to aim for more realism or do you go for a little stylized as well? I kind of do a little bit of stylized realism. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. I don't go too far with it, but yeah. just a little. Cool. Okay. I like to do a little more to the photo than the plain photo. Right. Yeah. And I guess you had asked me what I've been working on lately and one, yeah. one example of trying to do that is my friend Linda has been trying to get me out to do Milky Way photography mm -hmm. for years but I don't like I like sleeping <laughs> so I finally did it and um, this year when we went out we took a workshop in Acadia National Park mm -hmm. and I had a uh, the chance to do a panorama of the Milky Way and on this panorama I'm not done editing it yet mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to figure out what I want it to look like. Because if you think about the Milky Way, you don't really see it that much when right. you look at it. So when people photograph it, there's a lot of editing to make it look like what you want it to look like. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of artistic license yes. with what it's gonna look like. And some make it really look very, very colorful and other people like it a little more natural looking and I'm not sure yet. Very cool, yeah. I, I like working with that too. I just got a second space in Mass Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and I did some cards. I'm going to be bringing them up here into this gallery as well. Okay. But I call them kindness award cards, okay. and they're my photos with a little saying on them, and they're extremely corny, but I think the idea of them is really good. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a way to acknowledge when someone is kind to you with a card. So it's just a greeting card, but I take some of my photographs and, and make them into these cards. So this one is... It's kind of, like I said, it's corny, but it's just one of my photos of sunflowers locally, and it just says, be the change. There's a bee on the sunflower, and it says, kindness award, and you can write inside, you know, thank you for being kind in this way. You, you were helping me change or be the change. Then I have another one. It says, you radiate kindness. Here is your kindness award, and that's a stylized photo, which I, one of my favorites. That's cool, yeah. I like that one. And then this one is your kindness washes over me here's your kindness award thank you and then you can write in there what what they did that really struck you as being kind and this is a photo that i have right in the gallery also for sale um, it's hampton beach with a storm coming through that's cool and here are my just they're also nature cards just plain nature cards and that's the one with the three deer so i'm starting to do more and more cards because like i said i want the art to be affordable and they do sell yeah that's a great idea, um, spreading positivity and, and thankfulness. That's really great. If you could give one tip or advice to aspiring artists, what would that be? I think what I would say is, if you say you can't draw, I am telling you, you can learn. And I hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Even my, my neighbor who's with me today, she said, oh, I can't draw, I can't take a watercolor class. I'm like, oh, yes, but I think you can. You just don't know it yet. And you just have to take the leap. You know, yep. have the courage and take the leap and say, you know what, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I'm going to have fun. And you'll learn that they teach you how to see, 
and how to how to interpret what you see onto paper, to, you know, or whatever to start with. But I would say go for it, and don't think that you can't. Because I used to say I can't draw a stick figure, and that used I to hear be that true. one a lot. <laughs> I know, and it's it, some people are just naturally born with the talent to, to draw, and that's really wonderful. And other people, it has to kind of come out with a little bit of help, and it it can. Definitely, that's great advice. I definitely agree with that as well. <laughs> it's definitely a skill that you can learn and develop over time. And um, yeah, you've definitely done that. I can't believe you didn't think you could draw. No, I couldn't. Your I work. couldn't. You should see my early greyhound drawings. They are not good. And um, even still, it's it's hard to do animals and mm -hmm. have it look like the animal mm -hmm. and all that. But all of a sudden, they look back at you, and, they, and you're like, "Well, there they are." That's nice. Yeah. To see more of Natalie's work, visit the Seacoast Artists Association Gallery in downtown Exeter, open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5, and Sunday, 12 to 4. You can also see more of Natalie's work on her website, natalies-art.com.